Hi, Aries. Welcome to your December 2017 astral update. It's Raina here. Well, Aries, so you are seeing Saturn going into your 10th house of career on the 19th of the month. And so this is going to be a really great run of things from 2000, well, of course, late 2017, probably until 2020. I don't know exactly when Saturn is going to leave Capricorn, but it's supposed to be like two and a half years, two and a half years for each uh, sign. So this is a very pivotal month for you. You've had Saturn in the ninth house in Sagittarius, and the ninth house is the house of God. It's the house of the higher mind. So some people may have decided to go back to university or, you know, go for the first time. You may have um, wanted to publish a book. You may, have, there, there's so many possibilities. Uh, with Saturn, it's always about longevity. It's all always about doing something that is going to bring long lasting results. And so in the ninth house, it could have had something to do with anything that relates to your philosophy of life. So there may have definitely been Aries out there who became very spiritual in recent years. And I would even say before this period, before the last two and a half years, I believe Saturn went into Sagittarius around 2015. So you might trace it back to then, but I will say that it's possible as far back as 2008, when Pluto went into Capricorn, that you may have felt this sense of things getting intense, things getting very, um, you know, with your work life, uh, your career aspirations, you may have been very driven, but yet somehow had many twists and turns because uh, Uranus went into your sign several years ago. I probably should have <laughs> checked to see exactly what year that was. I believe it was 2012, but don't quote me on that. Uh, maybe 2011, but it's been several years. And with Uranus in Aries, you may have had a lot, a lot of uh, surprises in your basic uh, life. And that can lead an Aries person, quite frankly, to feel a little bit um, confused and maybe like thinking that there's no solid ground under your feet. Aries likes excitement, no question about it. And Uranus can provide excitement, but it's so erratic that you may feel like you don't know whether you're coming or going. And with the, the, the square from, um, Pluto, that to your sun, or if it's your rising sign that, uh, Aries is, that can be quite unsettling because you may feel this sense of frustration, like you're trying to accomplish certain goals and you just can't quite get there. And so what I want to tell you is that when Saturn goes into that 10th house, I believe it's going to stabilize some of this stuff. It's not that you're not going to continue to go through uh, more, um, I don't know what you, if you'd call it purification with Pluto. Uh, transformation is probably the best word. You are, you're going to continue to do that. And um Uranus is going to briefly go into Taurus in 2018 and then go back into Aries and then fully go into Taurus in 2019. So, you know, after next year, I think that you will feel a little bit more stable. And then 2023 is when Pluto leaves Capricorn. So um, that sounds like a, a long time from now, but it really isn't. Um, time goes very quickly when you're an adult, especially a mature adult. And uh, so it's all part of the journey, isn't it? And so let's talk about some of these other transits that are happening. But I do want to say that when Saturn goes into your 10th house, what is so auspicious about it is that 
it's the house that it rules. And so it can really give you a stabilizing foundational influence for two and a half years where you can get your, you know what, your stuff together. And this can carry you out for decades because it will leave that house after a few years and then come back in 30 years or, you know, minus maybe like 27 years. So that's what Saturn's all about, the long haul. Okay. And, um, so any organization that you need to do any kind of, if you have aspirations, maybe you haven't fully realized yourself through your career. This can be the time to really, uh, try to nail things down and get as organized as streamlined, you know, Saturn is about kind of cutting off the excess, cutting out the excess and just really focusing on what it is that you're trying to accomplish. The 10th house is all about accomplishments. So it's perfect. And Pluto, um, I feel won't be a negative, uh, you know, companion with uh, Saturn. It may be an intense one, but Pluto is about making you your best self and it will, um, kind of it, what there's a, a word that I'm looking for. It's like purification. It will give you that sense of purging. That's what I, I wanted to say. It will purge you of the things that don't serve you that are keeping you back when it comes to career matters, but it can also, but in doing so, it will render you better than before. Okay. So the month begins with Venus going into Sagittarius. Again, that God house, that ninth house. So Venus has been uh, in November in your eighth house of other people's money going into this house, friendly angle trine to your sun or your rising sign. And this can indicate if you're single, meeting somebody from an entirely different uh, country, if you're traveling for this uh, holiday season uh, to some faraway place, you may meet somebody far away. And um, I was going to break into some enchanted evening for some reason. And I, I think I was thinking of that uh, musical South Pacific. I think that was from that. And I was thinking of some exotic island. Um, but anyway, yeah, that that's what's happening. Um, it can also indicate money through publishing or cause Venus can bring money. So anything to do with, um, a academic environment too, because it can be university level learning that you can profit from. And, um, then it goes into your career sector on Christmas day, the 25th. Now, let me just tell you what activity you have in that sector. Um, the sun goes there on solstice, which is the 21st. So um, the sun is in your ninth house for most of the month. And then it goes into that 10th house. And then you have a Saturn as I had stated a couple days earlier on the 19th, going into that 10th house. So there's going to be a new moon in your ninth house. And um, I had mentioned in some of the previous and the other uh, signs videos that I feel that this is a very special new moon because it's at 26 degrees of Sagittarius and the galactic center is 27 degrees of Sagittarius and so we would consider that a conjunction. And for you, this is like the zero point or the point of utter conception in the area of the higher mind, your philosophy. You can totally remake your way of um, seeing life itself, um, your philosophy of life at this time. You can really have a totally different concept of spiritual beliefs and that framework, which guides your life. And because I see this um, alignment 
with the galactic center and the new moon as being a real birthing that um, beyond, you know, the typical new moon, which is just like, okay, plant your seeds of intention based upon your life as is right now. I feel like you can totally recreate uh, a certain area in your case, the ninth house, which is a very expansive house ruled by Jupiter and be like this total visionary, but without those preconceived notions that sometimes we carry with us because really the ninth house is also, um, I would say the dogma that we have come, that we have collected from other people's conditioning. You know, a lot of people I feel that have turned away from spirituality and they might call it religion is because they were inundated with it growing up. Like people who say, I'm an atheist. I don't want any part of that. You know, they could have uh, had some kind of negative experience with organized religion when they were younger, and that turned them off to anything connected to the idea of the concept of a creator, the concept of having a, a framework of ethics. But see, the thing is, when everything is so moralistic, there's a lot of shaming involved. So if people are not perfect, which um, we never... I think we always have room for improvement in our lives um, with our behavior. And sometimes these organized religions try to imply that the person is just totally um, fallen if they have any kind of temptation or um, bad moment. And it, it really can create a lot of um, shame and guilt. And so the ninth house at its highest expression is about freedom in, as far as I'm concerned, because that's what Sagittarius represents. But freedom means being able to live without feeling guilt all the time, because that's a, a feeling that weighs people down when they feel like they're um, doing something wrong, when they feel like they're not really... Um, expressing the light within themselves. And so you may totally be able to change that. And you've already been dealing with this because you've had Saturn in this sector and it has given you, some of you, if you have um, been conscious of it, you may have really gone after this, um, given you a framework, a structure. Saturn is all about organization in this belief system. Aries people tend to be very physically active and not necessarily reflecting on their life. And um, this, it's very important, I feel, to reflect on, on your uh, behavior at all times and not just kind of um, try to, to do things all the time to kind of change things. But sometimes you have to be passive and sometimes you just have to allow um, things to be as they are. Aries people are really um, about change, uh, changing things, about initiating action. And um, this is why they tend to be very successful. You tend to be very successful. And um, so anyway, there's that. And Anything else? You know, why did I skip something very important here? On the third of the month, so I'm going way back here, uh, there's going to be a Mercury retrograde in that God house, okay? You're rethinking something. Now, maybe you were planning on taking a trip somewhere far away, and the travel arrangements got all mucked up, and you have to redo them. Mercury goes direct on the 22nd, so you you probably will get things ironed out before Christmas, but who knows, you might decide to delay your trip until after the new year. But it could have something to do with um, if you have any kind of job offer that deals with a university, for instance, you may decide, hey, um, I'm going to take them up on this. It may be something that you applied for in the past and all of a sudden they call you, uh, maybe for the next semester. And likewise, if you want to be a student, you may 
be going back into that for some reason. And, you know, re looking at once again, some course of studies or uh, something along those lines. For everyone, Mercury retrogrades can bring people into your life that were there before, you know. And so be prepared for that because you may get a blast from the past. But on that same day, we have a full moon in Gemini. For you, this is your third house of the internet, other forms of communication, but also connected to teaching, also connected to commu communication like writing. Uh, for people who are writers, there may be some project that you're finishing that you're ready to publish and the ninth house can be publishing. So you may be like uh, in December editing and that might be what, what that Mercury retrograde is for you. And on the ninth of the month, we have Mars going into your eighth house. Now, this means that when Mars um, is, was in Libra, which is, um, your seventh house, your opposite sign of, uh, you know, Aries, uh, has a complementary sign, its opposite sign, which is Libra. And for the whole month of November and the first nine days of December, Mars is in Libra. And so that that's your seventh house. Now, for some people, you may be going through a divorce, you may be going through some kind of um, uh, lawsuit, or it would be something perhaps with the court systems, with the court system. And it could also relate to your marriage, because the seventh house deals with that, but it could be like some kind of antagonistic, um, fighting uh, situation, which Mars, that's your ruler, tends to bring vigorous um, energy uh, or combative energy into that sector. And then it goes into your eighth house and that deals with other people's money. So you could be, uh, it could be like some kind of um, inheritance issue where there had to be a probate situation and you might have had to um, hire a lawyer for yourself to, to get your your piece of the pie, so to speak, and that created the the situation. And knowing that there's a full moon in Scorpio in the spring, I believe it's April 29th, something like that, that might be the time when you see the resolution to this particular situation. Okay, Aries. Well, I think I've said enough and I wish you all the best in the month of uh, December. I do have um, a special for all of my readings, 20% off. And these include my natal chart interpretations. So you can uh, follow the link below if you're interested in that. But happy holidays to you and God bless. Bye.